Greetings, founders and entrepreneurs. My name's Lance. I'm an angel investor, advisor, founder of Anonymizer.com, and creator of Feel the Boot, where you'll get tips and advice for early stage companies and interviews with entrepreneurial leaders. If you're here today, I assume you're trying to build your startup. Now, I've done a lot of episodes about how to do that with ideas and strategies and certain techniques, but they're not enough. You need to be lucky. So today, I want to talk about how you can create that luck and exploit the opportunities you find to make your business successful. And I'm going to do it using several examples from my experience building Anonymizer.com. The corpses of companies with good ideas and strong execution litter the entrepreneurial landscape. I know that I had a number of competitors that were easily as smart and hardworking as I was, yet they didn't make it, largely because they didn't get some of the lucky breaks that I did. Now, some of the stories I could tell about luck are definitely after a few beers about surviving insane situations by the skin of our teeth. But today, I want to talk about some very specific stories that show how we were able to make and exploit our own luck and opportunities. And I want to share them with you so you can take control of your destiny. It was an ordinary day at Anonymizer. We were trying to get new customers, try to develop the next version of the product, deal with bugs and fires that were coming up all the time. But we were interrupted when our receptionist brought a couple of FBI agents into our conference room and they were delivering a subpoena. Usually we got subpoenas by fax or mail or email, but in this case, they decided they wanted to deliver the subpoena personally. They wanted to know which of our users had gone to a particular website at a particular time. And we were in the process of explaining to them that we couldn't answer that question. Anonymizer had been designed intentionally to make sure that we couldn't know the answer to that question. And they were getting pretty tense about it. They weren't happy with the fact that we were getting in the way of their operation. Things were getting uncomfortable in that room. Now this doesn't sound like the obvious start to a lucky situation, but that day transformed our company and was the single luckiest thing that ever happened to us. I want to go back to the very beginning, back to a day in 1995 when I was driving home from my job as a graduate student in astrophysics at UCSD and I was in my car and saw a billboard by the side of the road. It was a billboard I had seen hundreds of times before. It was always taken by a local mall and it would be advertising some new store opening or the JCPenney's white sale or some other kind of Christmas event or whatever was going on. It was always something and it was usually pretty boring. That day I happened to glance up on it and it was an ad for the mall. And below the name of the mall, it said the URL of the mall. And it was like the sky had opened and a thunderbolt hit me on the head because I had literally never seen an ad with a URL on it before in my life. Now, I knew about URLs. I was connected to the San Diego Supercomputer Center. I built the website for our astrophysics group. You know, this was only a couple of years after the web actually became public and available on the internet in 1991. So I was very familiar with URLs, but I didn't think anyone else in the world knew. And when they were suddenly appearing on a billboard, that said, we'd hit a tipping point. We had reached this place where it actually made economic sense for a mall to put their URL on a billboard by the side of the street. And I realized this was the time to jump. If I was going to create a company, a privacy service, I needed to do it now. The internet was growing and I could jump in and get in on that action while things were still growing quickly, but still small. I could be part of that land grab. And in fact, I'd been watching for a sign like this for some time. I didn't want to be too early where there wouldn't be any customers for me and no one would have any idea what I was doing. But if I waited too long, then the window of opportunity for a frankly business clueless astronomer to start a successful internet company was going to close. I had literally seen a sign and the sign said, start your company now. Doubtless, many, many other people drove by the same billboard I did on the same day. Probably thousands of people saw the URL and many of those probably even knew what a URL was and made note of it. But 
As far as I know, no one else saw the meaning in it that I did. And I think the reason I saw it is I was actively looking for a sign like that. I had my eyes open. I knew that there was a timing issue involved with the internet. And when I'd started, clearly it was too early. And Frank, when I started, there were questions of whether it was legal to put commercial content on the internet at all because so much of it was owned by the government and you were supposed to be a nonprofit or an educational institution. But things were changing fast and I was looking out for that, so I saw it. It was a lucky break. The timing was in fact excellent. I was able to get in, get the business started, start building traction, start making money, and I was early enough that I could actually work out what I was doing and learn some business before the crush of competition landed on me. So you could say it was very lucky that I started when I did, but it was the kind of luck that I had a lot to do with. A few years later, because I still had a lot to learn about business, I hired Bill to be my CEO. So I could focus on strategy as chair of the company and on the technology as the CTO. Bill was brilliant at making luck. One day he saw a press release that said that this company had gotten a contract with the Voice of America, the VOA, to provide censorship circumvention services against China. And he said, oh, I think we could do something like that and called them up got on the phone and said, hey, you shouldn't do a contract with them, you should do it with us. Pretty bold move, kind of a random shot in the dark. It turns out that this press release had come out before the contract had actually been signed. They jumped the gun and the folks at the VOA weren't particularly happy about it. So Bill said, hey, look, don't sign the contract. Give us a couple of days and we'll get you a proposal for something that's way better than what they can do. And they said, awesome, we'd love to see it. So then Bill walks down the hall and sticks his head in my office, goes, hey Lance, I just got off the phone with the Voice of America and they're interested in having a proposal for a censorship circumvention tool. And I told them we had one that was way better than theirs. Could you please invent that over the next couple of days? Which we did and ended up getting that contract. And that contract ended up going on to re renewals and expansions. We added on anti-censorship against Iran. It was a fantastic deal for us, lasted for many years, but it's a classic example of making your own luck. So let's unpack that. How did we make that luck? How was it that we happened to stumble upon this amazing opportunity where the VOA was unhappy with their providers and hadn't signed this contract yet on an opportunity that we previously didn't even know existed? Well, the reality is we took a lot of shots. We called a lot of people. We tried a lot of things and the vast majority of them failed. You know, any individual case where you get a hand in poker and get a royal flush, or in my case, more likely roll a D20 and get a natural 20 is unlikely. But if you play enough poker or roll enough dice, you're going to get those things happening on a reliable basis. And that was the key. He took the chances. He said, there's a possibility here, let's test it. They were simple, quick experiments. It would have been a five minute phone call. And if he'd been wrong, they would have just said, yeah, no, we're already happy go pound sand, and he would have, and we'd try again. So the investment in taking a shot like that was very low, but the payoff was very large. So iterating that increases your chances of getting those lucky breaks. If there's a thousand to one chance that something happens and you try 2000 chances, there's a really good possibility that that thing is going to happen. They say that luck is where preparation meets opportunity. I think that may be true, particularly if the preparation we're talking about is the mental preparation to recognize those opportunities. But I think it's also very true that luck is what happens when opportunity meets the boldness to take advantage of those opportunities when you see them. I'm going to recommend that you treat luck as prey. You want to hunt it. You want to stock out the places where it lives, hide by those watering holes, stake out the trails that it takes. and. Keep your focus on looking for the signs that those opportunities are nearby and when they are, jump on them, spring and take action quickly. And be prepared to do so many times. The lions don't always catch their prey. They're taking a lot of shots at the gazelle and eventually they're going to get one. So there we were sitting across the conference table from a couple of pretty annoyed FBI agents and they did not want to hear me talking about the importance of privacy and the amount of data that was collected on the internet and the issues of surveillance in totalitarian societies. They wanted to get the name of the guy who did this thing so they could go arrest him, full stop. And I was just getting in their way. 
And we were talking around and talking around. They were trying to convince me to give them this information, which I did not have. When finally, I asked them, how do you deal with this issue? When you're going out and investigating these bad guys, when you're doing an undercover that you have to go online, how do you do that without the bad guy knowing that you're from the FBI and blowing the whole operation? Because it's really easy to tell. And this changed the conversation immediately. They began to think, because they didn't have very good ways of doing this. They didn't have good solutions to this. And frankly, they hadn't really thought about all the ways in which they leaked information about who they were. And so they ended up going away somewhat thoughtful. And this led to an opportunity for me to go to their location, to go to a conference room and stand in front of a large number of pretty suspicious and well-armed FBI agents to explain to them the ways in which the internet could cause their undercover and investigative operations to unravel and the kinds of things they could do to protect themselves. And that led to our first government contract ever. And within just a few years, we went from being entirely focused on consumer privacy, largely oriented around protecting people against surveillance by the government, to over 95% of our business providing undercover support and anonymity tools for the US government. It was the product market fit we'd been looking for, and that one conversation made Anonymizer. So obviously, every opportunity doesn't come wrapped up with beautiful paper and a nice bow on it. Sometimes the pot of gold sits under a rock with a scorpion sitting on top. Every interaction you have is a potential opportunity to create some luck to create something that hadn't been there before. Now, most of the time, it's not going to be, right? Most of the rocks you look under don't have gold under them. Most of the scorpions don't hide the treasure you're looking for. But when you turn over enough, you're gonna get that lucky break. You're gonna find that opportunity that you've been looking for. And it takes some real flexibility because it may not be the kind of opportunity you were looking for. In general, we thought our business was going to be built on consumer anonymity. And we were always looking at how do we convince people of the importance of privacy and how do we get more users? How do we generate more uh, return on our advertising expenses or create new partnerships? We hadn't even thought about enterprise needs for privacy, particularly not government needs. But when this conversation happened, we were flexible enough to see the possibility and quickly pivot into that direction. So when you're hunting luck, when you're going after those opportunities, don't limit yourself to the ones that are obviously within your current strategy. It might take a pivot to get there, but that could be the pivot you need to transform your business. So keep an open mind. You never know what's gonna happen. So I guess the point is that while being smart and hardworking with a great idea and excellent execution is all critical, it usually isn't enough. Luck almost always plays an important role in the success of a startup. And while you might just wait for luck to happen, it's unlikely to do so unless you go out and hunt it down. And that takes time looking up from the day-to-day -day grind, getting out of that tunnel vision situation and seeing the larger world, looking for those signs, having those conversations, considering every possible interaction as a potential change and opportunity you might be able to exploit. Not to get distracted and spend all your time on that, because it doesn't take that much, but take the time, the little bits of time, the little bit of attention to keep yourself open to those opportunities wherever they may come, no matter how far in left field. Thanks for joining me. I hope you found this useful and interesting, and I'd love to hear from you how luck has played a role in your startup and whether you took an active part in creating that luck. Please let me know down in the comments, or better yet, join me and a number of other entrepreneurs over at the Feel the Boot Founders Alliance over on Facebook. I'll put a link down in the description. Also, it would really help me if you could like and subscribe to this channel. It makes a huge difference with the Facebook algorithm in letting me reach more people, and I'm trying to help as many people as I possibly can. I'd really appreciate it. It makes a big difference. Till next time, ciao.